Hello everyone and welcome to today's Cognautics video. We're going to focus on green IT or green computing as it's sometimes known. This is the first video in a two-part series that examines the backstory around global warming, greenhouse gases, climate change and the resulting focus on sustainability. This video will focus on these areas and it's vital that you understand the pillars that underpin the need for green IT as these ideas form the structure for any essay question. Remember, you need to link climate change with the information technology industry and explain how organisations must respond to UN agreements, governmental frameworks and so on to develop a sustainable model. You can't begin to understand green IT without having a clear picture of how we've reached this point, so bear with me while I cover the groundwork for this topic. While you won't gain marks for debating the molecular differences between fluorocarbons and nitrous oxide, trying to answer a question on green IT without understanding the backstory, it's like playing football without a ball. It took me ages to think of that analogy. I'll examine one example of UK government green policy on information and technology and drill down to look at the concrete steps that companies should take to be considered green and state the benefits of doing so. I'll finish by discussing the measures that one IT company has taken to become carbon neutral, or perhaps with a more critical eye, the steps that a company can take to be able to declare themselves as carbon neutral. So let's get into it and begin by exploring the areas we're going to cover today. I'll start by defining what we mean by green IT and sustainability. I'll highlight how technology damages the planet and look at the journey that green policies take from inception at climate change summits to becoming government policy. Let's begin the story by defining green IT. Green IT are the measures that technology companies can take to respond positively to global warming and climate change. Right, time for a quick environmental recap. We know that global warming is caused by burning fossil fuels such as coal or oil. Just to put things in the right order, let's make sure we understand that global warming leads to climate change. One byproduct of burning fossil fuels are greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide. There are actually a number of greenhouse gases including methane, fluorinated gases and nitrous oxide. Part of the reason we refer to carbon emissions and not other greenhouse gases is explained by the fact that over 80% of greenhouse gas emissions are from carbon dioxide. So while other gases cause damage, CO2 is the main villain in this story. So usually the sun's rays hit the earth and the heat is reflected back into outer space. But these greenhouse gases prevent the sun's heat from escaping back into the atmosphere, thereby causing global temperatures to rise. The link between rising global temperatures and our burning of fossil fuels is inextricable and it's a matter of scientific fact, especially when you compare global temperature fluctuations before and after the Industrial Revolution. In other words, the point at which we began burning coal on an industrial scale. The effects have been catastrophic. Climate change has already caused glaciers, sea ice and polar ice caps to melt. Global sea levels are rising, rain and snowfall have increased globally, temperatures have risen, causing wildlife to migrate to cooler climes and drinking water has become more scarce. Climate change is also linked to increasingly frequent extreme weather events. The scientific evidence is in and it points overwhelmingly to fossil fuels being the bad guy. Climate change has led global organisations and governments to set targets and devise new ways in which companies can make IT more green. Why has this happened? Because the situation is not sustainable. The damaging effect of greenhouse gases has become known as the carbon footprint and it's measured in the amount of greenhouse gases produced by a given activity. So for example, driving a car from London to Manchester, importing vanilla from Madagascar to the UK or storing data in the cloud. Each of these activities can be measured to produce a certain amount of CO2. For the sake of simplicity, all the impacts on the Earth are added together and expressed as a single number in terms of the carbon dioxide or carbon equivalent. In other words, the amount of CO2 that would create the same amount of global warming. Okay, 
Now we fully understand what global warming is and its effect on planet Earth, let's turn our attention to sustainability. We can define it as the way in which natural systems function, remain diverse and produce everything they require to stay in balance. Each year, the human race tends to use 40% more resources than it puts back. Well, what does that mean? If you consider the natural resources on planet Earth, from the trees that produce oxygen, to the finite deposits of gold, silver, platinum and other raw materials, to the energy that we consume in our everyday lives, we are taking more away from the Earth than we are giving back, and therefore our existence will be threatened, because these finite resources are running out. Therefore, existence in its current form is not sustainable. Sustainability incorporates ideas such as recycling, replanting trees, building products that last rather than products that get thrown away. Built-in obsolescence, it's a lovely phrase to use in essays. It means that products are being produced with a very short life cycle. Think about the example of mobile phones, where parents feel pressured to buy their children new phones in a yearly cycle, when fundamentally their feature sets haven't changed. All of these products contain raw materials that are not replaceable and have been manufactured at the expense of a huge amount of energy, both in the manufacturing processes and through supply chains that are built around profit rather than sustainability. These products often end up in landfill sites discarded and forgotten. Sustainability encompasses many areas of human activity, from economics to social development as well as the environment. The economics of sustainability fly somewhat in the face of consumerism that has enveloped the Western world, with companies releasing updated products with ever-increasing frequency in a drive for profits. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you want to be the first to see new content. Bye bye.